I'm fine. And you, Etienne? <laughs> Pretty well. So, welcome to the Dead Cell Run Fresh File Any Percent. So, that's for the people who know Dead Cells, you will probably think, hey, that's nearly impossible to beat Dead Cell in only one life, right? That, well, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, here we go. This, the, the objective of this run is basically to beat the games with only in a fresh file with the very first live of the, the runs. This is a roguelike, so normally that's not how the game has been designed to be beaten. You normally have to farm some resources, uh, die multiple times to grind, to learn the game and so on. But Avian is the type of speedrunner who can beat these games nearly on command, so... As you... Uh, yeah, and also we cut the incentive if I'm right, Mejako, right? Yeah. You know we do. Yeah. Yeah, we've got a wonderful costume for you, and today we are going to be outfitting as the Baguette. Yeah! So, you can select this uh, this costume right now and it's when you want, uh, Evian. Yeah, I'm ready to start in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, let's go! go. And here we go, in the very first world of Dead Cell. So, as we said, this is a roguelike. And the very first weapon is given to us, this is the bow and or no more basic sword. But as you expect to beat this game in a fresh file, you will need to grind a little bit of some weapons and also some skills. There is three of them, you can, you can uh, see them on the bottom left of the screens. Uh, the red one, the, gre the grey ones and the uh, green one. The most important one is the red one, the brutality. Brutality, when you see a person, uh, this is one of the upgrades uh, that Avian will always uh, be careful to take. Uh, to take. It will, most of the time, here we go, like this, choose the Brutality. Brutality increases your damage, and it's basically the um, skills that many weapons use to beat the bosses. So, in fact, uh, in fact you will, we will always go for a Brutality setup in this roguelike. Always be careful about the beginning of this run uh, to beat every single enemy without taking any possible damage because in in this this is a very dangerous run for a marathon run in fact because uh, if you die in dead cells basically the run is entire dead you just going back to the very beginning of the game so this is and also because all of the level are gener gener generate randomly this is kind of difficult to know exactly where to go and exactly where the exit or where the goal for example the key is but fortunately like many other uh, roguelike Dead Cells is built as part as many different patterns many different rooms that's always been the same and even have uh, I've done a hell of a lot of run of Dead Cells and know nearly perfectly which patterns conduct to for example the exit the key and so on so this is the, the very first shop. Unfortunately, we didn't have enough resources to get one of the most powerful items in this one that we will see later, the um, Assault Shield. But for the moment, we are in the Promenade of Condemned. This, uh, this, uh, in this world, if, if Avian is lucky, he can have the, the, um, the type of layout before a mid-boss that allow him to do a really cool skip, but it's it's a roguelike, you know, it's random, so we have to take care about that. So yeah, to set up the skip, actually, I want to kill uh, at least five enemies. I'm gonna kill ten to be safe. So in most uh, of the layout, uh, I need actually a speed boost uh, to achieve the skip. Okay, uh, you see the little arrow uh, up above my character. That means I have the speed boost. I'm gonna try to keep it. Okay, so it's decrease a little bit, still have to beat some enemy. Those uh, cycle ones are portal, you can teleport yourself uh, nearly at every single portal you activate in the in this, in this world. So it can use kind of useful for do some backtracking because you have to search where is the goal of each level that has been ra randomly uh, generated. Well, that's too much curse, I'm not gonna take that. I think this skip is not really feasible. Yeah, you're too low. Unfortunately, that was here. So. That's unfortunate, but we'll have to beat this boss that we can normally skip in a very good seal. But unfortunate, that's not a, that's not a really good seal. But you get a pretty good weapon at the beginning, those twin sword. That's not the best one for a speed run, but it's a really good, uh, really good start, honestly. I hope I will get better on a speed run door because uh, 
The weapons on the speedrun doors you just see before, we'll see after, uh, are slightly better. Definitely. Um, and we can also uh, speak a little bit about uh, the, um, the interface of the game. So of course, you see the live bar at the bottom. The two uh, triggers is uh, to um, use weapons, and those weapons use the second ability, the tactical. But honestly, it's way more uh, stable and safer to go for the brutality once again. There we go. Yeah, especially in fresh file. Actually, most of the weapon uh, on a fresh file scale with brutality. So it's the safer strat and also the best weapon or uh, skill with brutality also. Mm. There's one runner, Vort, to not name it, uh, to not name them, uh, who likes to run with tactics, but uh, he's a bit different. That's really risky. And, yeah, and even this run is already as dangerous for a marathon, honestly. <laughs> so, second shop. And we go for a tiny heal, a flask, and here we go for this item. The Assault Shield is a really, really broken item, as you will see. It can allow you, by a, to an animation cancel like this, to dash very fast in front of you and also to block some projectiles. So this will be, as, as soon as he can, Evian will use this dash with the shield to win times, but basically. Yeah, I didn't get a uh, brutality weapon uh, on the door, so maybe I'm gonna switch to tactics actually. That's gonna be an idea because you got uh, some uh, a good a good weapon honestly. That this is this little turret that uh, that t that uh, shoot in front of an enemy as uh, when uh, um, on command basically. So we are on the rampart. So here there will be another. Um, yeah, this is this world. There was another glitch. We have to take this uh, this uh, portion. So we will go for ta for tactical. That would be interesting. In uh, the run. <laughs> I never do that actually, but uh, you're literally in a situation that can be useful. Yeah, that's uh, the laws of RNG. I have to adapt. This is basically the fact of every single roguelike you have to adapt. And this is what makes a really good uh, roguelike player and a roguelike speedrunner also. So this, yeah, as we can see, the, 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 da the dashing shield that's also working in the air is totally bursting. It's so broken. And it will al that will allow to Evian to, do, to go for another really important skip. And that's the, the, the elevator. This is the, the pattern that can link you to the, to the Black Bridge. So that was already so fast. Uh, you've talked about my turret before. Uh, you can see uh, the little uh, uh, two above my character. It means uh, I deal two, twice the damage, but I also receive twice the damage. So I have to be careful against this boss. Yeah. And there we go for the first boss that can surge. But fortunately, you have the turret with a lot of tactical points, five of them, so you have a, some constant damage. So another thing about those boss, this boss is kinda slow, so honestly, it's only the very first boss, that's the very first boss, but you don't have a lot of weapon, honestly. So That's fine, to be honest, that's fine. Uh, usually, I would have take the Vengeance Mutation, which gives me a damage bonus if I get hit. But uh, as I have that uh, Malus on my character, I'm not gonna do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just uh, dodge safely. That seems to be pretty risky, yeah. So, another thing about bosses, if somehow you beat a boss hitless, you didn't get any hits against a boss or go for a perfect kill, you can get a legendary weapon. But most of the time, that's preferable, as Evian said, to go for the Vengeance Mutations. But at this moment, we don't have it, so we can probably... Ah, uh, that was Risker here. Almost got hit. That's a perfect kill. No hit at all. <laughs> so he will, drop a, he will drop a legendary weapon right now. Uh, it, in the next door, actually. Oh, in the next door, yeah. So I'm going to take the speedrun... Uh, not, yeah. not really interesting. I already have a shield. Maybe the legendary item will be better. That's not really. Nah, that's not. Unfortunately, the, like in every single roguelike, you know, there is a, a bunch of items that speedrunners and very good players know by by her because they know they are very powerful. But even anytime an item is legendary, sometimes it's just useless you know yeah. <laughs> there is there is literally item that uh, that scale very badly that are very useful do a poor amount of damage so 
but even know perfectly which type of item he, he like. So we are in the next world. And it's a very dangerous one. So, okay, you get the village key, that's cool. So in this level, normally you got, you have to grab two key, if I'm right. But here, oh, that was so clean. No, so normally you shouldn't... Uh, yeah, this was the, this was the, the, the skips here. So that, that was a skip because normally you shouldn't be able to go uh, for this ledge. But using the, the, the assault shield, you can skip literally the quest that's, uh, that's asking you to grab two key and go immediately for the next area. So Actually, that's a very precise trick. Uh, yeah. When you cancel uh, your grabbing animation, then you... You jump at the very end of the ledge. You, you, you did first try, but I wasn't even sure that was a good layout, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so that was Actually, I was surprised to... That was, that was really fast. So now we are in a clock tower. Clock tower is really dangerous and also very random. Because to uh, beat this world, we need to grab the, um, the key of uh, the, the, the end of the area. And the key is always on the top of a tower. But there is multiple tower. So this is, there is a possibility that if you go for the top of the tower, then the, there are literally nothing on the top and they're just losing time. So let's hope for a good pattern. Let's hope for a, a good map. That's I'm gonna try this one. Let's see. Oh my god, there are so many enemies. So, so as we said, oh nice oppression. Go for more tacticals once again. That's making the tower shoot a little bit more. So that this is really cool that we got that in a in a marathon. So this would be uh, different than oh, on. the classical brutality uh, setup. Okay, some oversells that can be useful to uh, buy the very last uh, upgrade that we will need for the very last boss of this run. Uh, doesn't seem to be the right one. Oh, this is the shop. Yeah, uh, that's too bad. So this is the wrong. This is the wrong tower. Unfortunate. The key is not here. We have to to get to the no, to another uh, to another tower. Yeah, the hard part is to find the key actually. Yeah. So those enemies are really really fast because they are teleport. Uh, I'm gonna attract them here. Uh, this malus is, is actually very scary. Yeah. If I didn't have that double damage malus. Uh, I would play more aggressively, but uh, this is no joke. Yeah, you, you, you go for a very, for some, yeah. That was a very, pretty very short tower. Event, yeah. So but the some... key's here. Oh, that's good. There we go. So basically, normally in Dead Cells, you have to deal with the enemy that's chasing you to the infinite, but, but by Uch by Uchran them, you win times. But also, this is very risky, especially with this double amount of damage. Oh my god. That's really scary, not gonna lie. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I was so stre I'm so stressful when I commented that. <laughs> that was fine. So now you just have to go to the clock room. <sighs> and I'm gonna remove that malus before the boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah because the timekeeper, the yeah, the timekeeper is really way more dangerous and way more difficult than the very first boss that we get. He's basically controlling the time and can teleport in in different parts of this room. So that's kind of scary. And the thing is, it will use some shurikens. But fortunately, we have the assault dash with the shield that can block the, the, um, the different projectiles. But at the same time, the avian will have Erigo to dash through in a, ver in a very close way to the boss. That, that can be really dangerous, but it's all by being yeah, on a good timing. And as you can see, you do, because it don't have a lot of stuff, because we are on a fresh pile, you do nearly absolutely not a lot of damage for each uh, for each attack, so... To be honest, that's fine. That's... Not the best, but that's fine. Yeah, you're, 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 you're trying going well, yeah, because you have a lot of tactical, of course. So second phase, now there is some big laser coming from the top. We have to be really careful about that, because that deals a hell of a lot of damage. Well, the, the annoying part is to chase the boss. Yes. But that was okay. That was already good. Got hit at the end, but... Uh, not a big deal. That was fast also. I think we have a tiny moment for a tiny for a donation, Nidako, if you want, before the very uh, the very last world. I can certainly do that. We've got $25 from Untimely Doom. And those $25 are going to the Zelda cosplay, which is currently at $508 out of $1,000. And I know you're thinking, gosh, that's not enough time to make it in the three minutes that are left of the run. But just donate $500 and just set it to Zelda. Just please. It's, it's, it's not a big ask. 
Thank you a lot. And also thank you a lot for the donation for the baguette costume. With a French flag or French uh, I mean I don't I don't remember the name of that in English. <laughs> So, the castle. The castle is a really important area. We have to farm for two keys to access to the very last boss of the run and the game. So, okay, this is not the worst uh, mini boss. And you also have a, a hell of a lot of damage thanks to the turret. That, that was very, very clean. So, there is definitely bosses that's a little bit easier than over, but this is a roguelike, so that's random. So, this is the very two, the, the two very first one that you get, you will... Uh, I want the two trackers you don't like. Yeah, I don't I, I don't like the twin, you know. Twin because uh, <laughs> the whip is very good, uh, because they are in water, so it can synergize good with the, the whip. Those enemies okay. are sometimes so difficult, so... So it won't be the trackers? No, it's... Oh, it's... It's normal, as you, as you said, the, the attack of this boss are really fast, so it can be really dangerous. So, you just have to stay on this back when he will, when will do a slam. You just have to be careful about this B2. Once again, the block. That's perfect. Just have to be careful. Once again, activating the okay. turret, and that's perfect. You just put the turret on this on this boot, and for some extra damage, you have the two key now, and yeah. we can go for the very last boss of the game. But how you will beat it is so difficult. Everyone who who played that cells know how this boss is unbeatable in a fresh party. You know. Here we go for the throne room, the, the object, but there is still the end. But I think we drop uh, something uh, on the second boss, which will help. Yeah. And we will purchase the light speed. And there is a thing in this game. So we will using, as you probably expect, a glitch to skip the very last boss. And how does it work? Basically, this game has the same problem as um, Super Mario 64, I guess. So the developer didn't cap the, the speed of a character backwards. So that can give you a hell of a lot of speed if you successfully do a frame perfect trick and you, you first try it. <laughs> that's, what's, that's normally so hard. So and, and the problem, if you missed it, you have to wait the cooldown of this light speed to retry it by re, uh, reverse the direction of your character to make the dash happen backwards and give you some extra speed to skip the trigger that activate the boss and trigger the, the final cutscene that beat the king. Basically. Yeah, and what is, can happen is also you succeed the skip, but uh, the boss fight uh, lunch. Yeah, you, you just, in, in, um, you just get soft activate locked. Activate this boss. This is the boss. This is the end of the king here. The, f the very final. And boss. time. <laughs> oh, that was a, a 60 minute. 50 seconds, if I'm right. S that's, such, that's pretty good. That's a, such a clean run, honestly. <laughs> so, basically, when you play this game, honestly, this, this uh, run didn't uh, reflect the gameplay of Dead Cells, basically. When you play this roguelike, there is so many weapons to discover, there is so many enemies to learn the pattern, to deal with them correctly, farm your character, die multiple times before you be able to see uh, and beat the very last boss, which is a very epic fight also. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's so many roads, so many levels. Uh, the, the developers are still uh, updating the game. Uh, it has been released uh, in uh, 2018, and they're still uh, releasing new DLCs, new, uh, new uh, updates. Yeah. So you might want to check it out. Yeah, if, 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 you, if you like games, like for example, I don't know, for like Hades, for example, the best example on another on another like this one, you will love it, honestly. So, do, give it give it a try. So. Thank you, Evians. Thank so, you, Aiden. You will recover you for Fury later, I guess. Yeah. Uh, during the marathon, so I think it's uh, it's up to it's up to us, Mitako. So it's up to you. Outstanding! <laughs> what an absolute whirlwind of a run. Let's hear for Evian and the wonderful commentary from Etion. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Do not go anywhere, my dudes. We have got Giant Clan with the Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker HD coming up next. Let's get it going. <laughs> 